Building a real-time application can be very tricky, and it often requires you to store data in multiple different formats. But did you know Redis Stack makes Redis a multi-model database and supports many of the capabilities you need all in a single database, thus saving you time and reducing complexity when trying to use databases from several providers. I built a sample application here that is for tracking a stock watch list. Under the hood, it stores data in several different ways using Redis Stack as the primary database and message broker. Not only am I using some basic data types like sets and hashes, but I'm also storing JSON documents, time series data, and even some probabilistic data. I'm also using PubSub to communicate information between a few different microservices in real time. More on that later though, for now let's dive into what you're looking at. The main focus of this app is the watch list. You can see here that I'm watching a number of popular stock symbols. I can even search for more if I want to. So I just go in and I type in BAC and you can see several different stock tickers here. And I can add those to my watch list if I need to just by clicking on them. I can also remove them if I want to from here. And on the right hand side of this card, you can see the real time trading information. So you'll see the latest trade from each stock. On the right hand side of the page, you'll see this card called Trending Stocks, which displays a list of most frequently traded stocks in my watch list over the last minute. Every minute it resets and keeps track of the number of trades that happen within that minute. The bottom of the page shows information based on what stock you select in your watch list. So you can click on different symbols in the watch list to change the information that's displayed. The chart is updated in real time using the Alpaca API. The number in the top left of the chart shows the latest trade price as well as the delta between the latest trade and the previous minute closing price. Every minute I receive a new closing price from Alpaca and update this chart. On the right hand side you see recent news. This is news that's grabbed from the Alpaca API about the particular stock you're looking at. Now let's break down how I'm storing, retrieving, and managing the data used to populate this screen. The watch list is stored in Redis as a set. A set makes the most sense for this case since it automatically prevents any duplicate symbols. I'm also storing information about each stock such as the name, sector, industry, and a list of news in a JSON document in Redis stack. The price is stored in a time series using the time series capabilities of Redis stack. This makes it easy to get the latest price very quickly. When the front end requests the watch list, I bring down some of the information from the JSON document as well as the latest trade for each symbol in the list. Then I'm using a WebSocket to receive price updates. The trend list uses a top K filter, which is a feature built into Redis stack that automatically builds a leaderboard for you. As trades come in from the Alpaca API, I simply add them to the top K filter and it lets me know if the leaderboard has changed. The chart uses time series data retrieved in real time from the Alpaca API and stored in Redis stack as a time series. When you store time series data in Redis stack, it makes it very easy for you to query the data over a date range as well as aggregate the data. It's perfect for storing data that you want to visualize on a chart where time is on the X axis. The news list is kept up to date using the Alpaca API and is stored in a JSON document in Redis stack along with other information about a stock. So you can see that while this app might look simple on the front end, behind the scenes there's a lot going on and the entire thing is powered by Redis stack. Now let's look at an architecture diagram for this application so you can get a sense of how all the pieces fit together. Looking at this architecture diagram, we'll start over on the left with the front end. The front end, which is what we just looked at, is responsible for getting all the data needed to populate that dashboard. So that's the time series information to populate the chart and the most up-to-date stock prices. It also populates the watch list. It also gets the trending stocks and it gets the news about the stocks you're interested in. What it also does is it uses a WebSocket with the API service to get real-time updates on stock prices, news, and the trending stocks. 
Next, we have the API service. So the API service is relatively simple. It just facilitates communication between the front end and Redis stack. It updates the watch list when you add or remove a stock from the watch list on the front end. And it queries for the data needed to populate the front end. So all that data we just talked about, the watch list, the leaderboard, the time series data, and the news. It also receives pub sub messages with all the leaderboard updates, new trades, and new bars, which are the open and close prices for a stock. It receives those directly from Redis. And those are actually generated, those messages are generated by the streaming service. So what the streaming service does is it communicates with the Alpaca API to receive real-time news, trade information, bars, and quotes. And when it receives a new quote or a trade, it will update the leaderboard using Redis Bloom and the top K filter. Then it publishes updates using PubSub with Redis for leaderboard changes or whenever there's a new trade or a new bar available. It also subscribes to watch list updates. So on the front end, when you add a stock to the watch list, the API is going to send a message to Redis saying update the watch list and the streaming service will receive that message and automatically subscribe to updates from the Alpaca API for that particular stock. Every time a new trade or bar or quote or news comes into the streaming service from Alpaca, it adds it to the time series for the stocks in the watch list. So what you can essentially see here is that Redis is handling a lot of what you might otherwise use several other tools to do. So it not only does it let you store data in multiple different formats, but Redis Stack also lets you use PubSub to communicate between microservices. I'm sure by now you're itching to look at some code to understand how the application is built. Instead of showing you all the code, which could take several hours to go through in depth, I'm going to highlight some specific areas that are interesting. If you're interested in learning more, you can find the code in the description down below this video. Looking at the code, you can see I have an API service, a stream service, and a UI service. The UI service is for the front end that we were just looking at. I'm not going to show you too much of the front end code because it's fairly similar to other applications you may have built. But I will mention that it's using Tailwind CSS, Chart.js, and Next.js. So it's a very typical front-end Next.js application that just calls an API to get all of the data. But let's look at what the API looks like. I wrote the API using Python and FastAPI, as well as Redis Ohm for communicating with Redis Stack. So the first two routes here are for the watch list. It lets you watch and unwatch stocks, so add and remove stocks from your watch list. I'm using a Redis set to keep track of your watch list. This makes it really easy because you can automatically avoid duplicates. The next route is to just get the watch list. What it does is it grabs the set out of Redis and then it uses Redis Ohm to get all the JSON documents where the symbol for the JSON document is in my watch list. This lets me bring more information forward, such as the news and some other information about the stock. Another route is searching. So this uses Redis search to find stocks. So when you're typing in the form in your watch list on the front end, as soon as you get to a certain number of characters, I start searching for stock symbols. This uses Redis search and Redis Ohm. This route is for getting all the bars over the last 30 minutes. So what I mean by a bar is the Alpaca API gives you what's called bars that have a high price, a low price, a volume, an open price, and a close price within a certain time period. So I'm looking at the last 30 minutes of bars. And this route just simply you provide a stock symbol and it returns the bars for you. The next route gives you an individual trade, so it will give you the latest trade for a particular symbol and the price of that trade. Both of these routes are using Redis time series, which is part of Redis stack, and it stores time series data so that you can easily query it over a range, kind of like we're doing here, 
or get the latest value, which is what we're doing here. This is the trending route, so this will give us the list of trending stocks. Remember, those stocks are trending based on the trading frequency. So all this does is looks at the top K filter and asks it to give us the list. This is using Redis Bloom, which is part of Redis Stack. Now the next few things might look like routes, but they're actually web sockets. So I have a trending stock web socket here where the front end can say, hey, give me all updates about trending stocks. And this will just listen to Redis Stack for messages about the trending stocks and automatically inform you that there's an updated trending list. This next one is similar, but for trades. So it lets you know whenever there's a new trade. And then the last one is for bars. So it will let you know when there's new bars. On the front end, this is how we update all of the price information in the watch list. And this is how we update the graph. That's about it for the API. Let's look at the streaming service now. The first thing we want to look at for the streaming service is the entry point, which is the main.py. So that like the API, this is written in Python and it uses the Alpaca SDK as well as Redis Stack. In the main loop, all that we're doing is connecting to Alpaca, deleting the trending stocks. So the trending stocks key is what we use to keep track of the trending stocks using Redis Bloom and Top K. Then it reserves the trending stocks again and syncs up the watch list with whatever is in the set in Redis at that time. What reserve top K does is it just reserves this key to be used with the top K filter. And we're saying keep track of the 12 most frequently traded stocks. And then we also set an expiration of this key to 60 seconds. The reason for this is every 60 seconds, we rebuild the trending stock list. So on the front end, every 60 seconds, you can see, okay, what stocks are being actively traded? So this is where we're using PubSub to understand when the trending stocks key has expired. And whenever it's expired, we re-reserve it and start rebuilding the list. We're also listening to the watch list. So if you recall in the API, on the front end, you can add something to your watch list or remove it. When you do that, the API simply updates the set within Redis. Well, here we're going to be listening to that watch list key space. And whenever it updates, we will sync it. So let's dive into what that looks like here. When we sync the watch list, we're basically getting the watch list, doing a set comparison and unsubscribing from anything we need to unsubscribe from and subscribing to whatever we need to subscribe to. The rest of this is all alpaca related. So we call subscribe trades. These are how we listen to the alpaca API in real time and get trades as well as bars. We can also initialize a stock if we need to. And what this will do is it will give us historical trades and historical bars about the stock. And it'll also create the time series keys that we need in Redis stack. So here it's creating all the time series with all of the trades over the last whatever time period we decided, which I think I decided the time period was going to be the last 30 minutes or something. And that's about it in here. The next piece of this is what happens as incoming trades and incoming bars come in. As incoming trades come in, we add the trade to our time series. And then we also add it to our top K and then we publish an update saying, okay, the top we've updated the top K. So there are, is a new trade in the top K that will tell our API to update the top K list on the front end. And if you remember, there's a web socket that the front end can listen to, to get updates to those trending stocks. So message flow here is an incoming trade comes from Alpaca. Then we publish a message saying, okay, we've updated the trades and updated the trending stocks list. Then the API receives that message and it will notify the front end if there are any changes needed. And I've just shown you just a little sneak peek of all the code that is in here. I wanted to show you some specific things 
to have you get a sense of how all of the pieces fit together within this application. But the next thing I want to show you is how this looks in Redis Insight. In Redis Insight, you can see how we have a bunch of JSON documents that represent each stock. So I pulled a bunch of data from NASDAQ directly to populate all of this information. Well, let's look at the watch list. So the watch list is a set and you can see it has all the items that are on that were represented on our watch list on the front end. So this is how we're able to keep track of what we're watching and add and remove things from this set when we either don't want to watch them anymore or if, if we want to watch a new stock. Now let's look at something on our watch list. So like Apple. So if I filter to Apple, you'll see we have a bunch of different data structures for Apple itself. The first one is this JSON document. So it stores information such as the market cap, the name, Apple common stock, the sector, and the industry. It also has an embedded list of news articles. So this is where on the front end, we're showing you all those lists of articles, and then we let you click and go to them. This is what we're pulling from the Alpaca API. So as new news articles come in, we update this JSON document with the article. We're also storing a bunch of different time series related to quotes, trades, and bars. You can't see the data in this, but let's look at what it looks like to get the latest trade from Apple. So what we'll do is we'll use the ts.get command to get the latest price of the Apple trade. So the first value that's returned is the timestamp, and the second one is the price. And what we do is we query this over a range in order to populate the chart on the front end. The command for that is ts.range. And what I'll do here is specify a from timestamp and a to timestamp to get several different values. So on the front end, we get a list of key value pairs where the key is the timestamp and the value is the stock price. So hopefully by now, you get a sense of how powerful Redis Stack is and how it turns Redis into a multi-model database that you can use to replace several technologies that you would typically use in a real-time application. Here, our entire application from start to finish is powered by Redis Stack.